It's about that time of day again, folks. Welcome back to Nightly News Newsletter, boys and girls. It's already Monday. Boy, Joseph James here. That weekend just flew right by. Welcome to Nightly Newsletter. Monday evening, August 17th, 2015. We've only got a few more of these summertime weekends. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Great to be back here at the desk again today. Boy, oh boy, the volatility continues. A little bit sluggish at the beginning of the week at the beginning of the week here, but boy, do we get some great trading opportunities today in our trade room. You guys had a great Monday. Before we get into tonight's newsletter, and we know we get a jam-packed newsletter for you, we get a big week ahead of us here, third week of the month of August. I remind you, everything we're going to cover today, I teach the proper way to enter and exit, manage risk to all of our students here at School of Trade. Guys, please don't gamble with this newsletter. I teach all of our students here at School of Trade the right way to do this. So please make sure you guys come out and join me as a student so I can teach you the right way to use all of these newsletter levels. Also, make sure you're watching this video on our trading blog right now for three reasons. First of all, on our blog here at Sideways Markets, you can grab a free pass to attend our live trade room as a guest, upper left-hand corner. Second thing here, lower left-hand corner, you can grab our nightly newsletter mailing list. All you need is your name and your email address. Join our mailing list. Also, you can download all the charts for today's video right below the video tonight. That's one of the big perks of being over here on our trading blog right now at Sideways Markets. You can download all the charts you're going to see in tonight's video right below that video here. Also, you can join our free trial. You can learn more about membership information. And you know, we've always got someone standing by here 24-7 to answer any of your questions. So make sure before you dig in here tonight, make sure you join our newsletter list, grab your free pass, download today's charts, use this trading blog, a lot of great resources for you here. And also, don't forget, if you grab the free pass or you register for the newsletter mailing list, don't forget to check your email. I'm going to send you a verification email. I'm going to need you to verify your email if we're going to be able to keep sending you emails in the future. And again, get with us if you have any questions every step of the way here on the right-hand side. I hope we got the helmets on. I hope we hydrated here tonight. We get, <laughs> we hopefully hopefully get the helmets uh, strapped in tight there because we got a busy newsletter in store for us here. First of all, on the crude oil here, we get a rollover alert starting with crude. We get a rollover alert here on the CL. We've been watching this thing kind of balance out. We're on the 915 contract right now on crude. Tomorrow is the 18th of the month. Now, if you're a brand new trader out there, don't forget, crude oil is the most challenging of all the markets because it rolls over every one month. Uh, natural gas would be the same thing, right? So every one month, uh, the energy futures markets will roll over uh, at the NYMEX. Right now, I don't think we're going to get rollover tomorrow. I do think we're probably going to be on Wednesday, but we will be watching the volume as it starts to balance out. Once the 1015 contract on crude oil gets more volume, then we know we'll be trading the 1015 contract, right? So if you're on NinjaTrader like I am, grab your market analyzer, and once you see that volume start to creep higher on the 1015, you know you're ready to start trading the 1015. We'll be watching that in real time tomorrow, so don't forget. And you guys, you really can't mess up rollover. You're not going to get delivery of a, a barrel of crude oil on your front doorstep tomorrow if you don't roll over. Uh, your broker will alert you if you have an open position. Uh, but remember, we don't have expiration until until another two weeks here. So it's just rollover means we're looking at the volume rolling to the 1015 contract. If you miss it by a day, even a couple days, it's not really the end of the world. You'll just be trading a market that has a little bit lower volume in the 915. So watch that 1015. Once it has more volume than 915, that's your cue to start moving to that 1015 and start trading it. If I had to guess right now, though, I would say tomorrow, Tuesday, we're sharing volume, and then Wednesday, we'll probably do roll. And of course, we have inventories on Wednesday, so that should be a fun Wednesday doing rollover and inventories. We will tackle that, though, tomorrow. In the meantime, what's our plan for crude tomorrow? Again, expect a little bit of low volume. It's not going to stop us. We don't really change the way that we trade with low volume. We just simply have to anticipate low volume most likely going to mean stay patient, right? It'll be a little bit slower out there. But hey, this is crude we're talking about. And the way this summer has gone, 
who the heck knows what tomorrow is going to bring. So I'll be ready for everything. But I do expect to see about half and half between the 9.15 and the 10.15, which means we'll be about lower volume on both of those contract months. And, of course, Wednesday expected to be the rollover. Now you know. How about the plan here? Still bearish. Still bearish. And just like we left off last week, remember last week? We finished up all the way down at range expansion support. My exact words were, buy those lows up to, remember what I said last week, 43, and then right back down. So here we are now. Here we are. If you miss the buying opportunity, we'll get it again. We'll get it again. We're going to have to wait for it to push a little bit lower, though. If you miss the selling opportunity I gave you on Friday, that's all right. We'll get another one. But now is not the time to be doing it. So let's take a look and, and anticipate, right? Still need proof, but we're going to anticipate. Remember, all of these levels you're going to see on these, on these charts tonight, these are areas of support and resistance. We'll be looking for traders to react. And then based on trend, based on personality we see in the short term, we'll then use our specific continuation, reversal, or failure patterns that we teach here at School of Trade. That's why it's so important you come out and join as a student and get properly educated on how this all works. So crude oil, bearish, trading inside a channel which means sellers will be looking for trades near the highs of this channel as well as opportunities to sell support levels using failure patterns on the way back down. Real quick, a couple channels here you can see. We get a major, major, major long-term channel. If we happen to make it back up towards that high, that's obviously where we'll be looking to sell short. That's where we really would love it, right? We love to get the rotation up to the high of that channel and then bring it right back down. That would just be the ideal selling opportunity up around these highs here, around that 44, 44 half. Once we roll over, it'll probably be closer to 45 because you know they've priced it into the future. Well, we also have a short term channel here you can see kind of in this little magenta, this uh, fuchsia, pink color, purple color if you will, right? And you'll notice We've done a pretty good job rotating here. Now, one thing that stands out to me right now here on crude oil is we haven't retested that, again, that kind of uh, fuchsia, right? Haven't retested that high. So I would definitely be expecting those sellers here to give back a little bit of this here because we're due for, well, I hate to use the word due. We're not due for anything, but that would be the next best selling opportunity that we'd be looking for, right? Up around, again, a little bit tough to see it. You can see there's a lot in this chart here, but a little bit tough to see it. But you definitely could expect here, that's where we like to get selling up at those highs here. So high of the short-term channel, high of the long-term channel, we know that's where you really wanna be focused if you're a seller right now. Reversal patterns, failure patterns, or if you miss both of those, then the continuations after we push lower. Now. The big thing I want to remind us right now, and this is my plan right now this week, every time we go higher, I'm going to be looking for another opportunity for one of our three patterns. Reversal pattern at resistance, failure pattern, right? Buyer failure at resistance. And then, of course, if you don't get the reversal, oh, sorry about that, wrong button on that, the continuation as it comes down, right? So as we push higher, it's going to be buyer failure to sell. It's going to be reversal pattern to sell. It's going to be wait for the reversal and then sell those rips, right? Wave patterns on the way back down. So every time this market goes higher, we're looking for one of three options, reversals, failures or continuations after the turn at these major resistance areas overhead. This is a very simple this is a very simple situation here in a bearish trend as this price goes higher, the juicier it gets for us to be able to sell these highs. The key is we don't blindly sell. We wait for the price again. Three options, reversal is the first one, 
Failure is the second one. And, of course, the third option would be the most conservative option would be after it goes higher, you wait for the reversal and then, of course, take the continuations right on down. Now, I also want to project out for you, like I said earlier, we haven't rotated back to the high of that minor channel here. So I've got some measured moves waiting for us overhead, right, some measured moves that puts us right around that 43 to 43.25 area, right? So that's definitely where we'd be looking for kind of the next big easy money opportunity, right, to get short. What about targets? What if we keep going lower here? Well, again, you'll notice some ABCDs, ABCDs, right? Get a lot of support levels waiting for us to the downside. So if we do happen to go lower, this is where you buyers can come in. This is where the buyers can actually step in here. You'll notice I drew in this little price wedge. This price wedge has a definite bearish tone to it. But I know there are going to be some bulls out there somewhere saying, Joe, there's got to be a bottom in here somewhere. Okay, well, even though I don't agree with that, let's give you guys some ammunition as well. Definitely looking for seller failure at support. Seller failure at support. If we do happen to make a run for it, now we're talking. You get me down around this 40, 50 area, just like I said last week, overextended, overextended. You put me in a real overextended, market's not due for anything. But if it does push all the way down, you know that's going to jack up the opportunity for the buyers here. Uh, but again, if you're a buyer right now, though, you've got to remember, uh, quick target, tight stop, treat it as a scalp. And in my opinion, the best way to be a buyer right now is to look at those support levels below us right now. 41.67, 41.40, 41.23. You can easily see them and then look for opportunities where, you know, for example, 41.67, we go down, sellers try once, try twice, buy that second attempt failure, buy right into those stop losses. Yes, it's lower percentage. Yes, you're being aggressive, but hey, at least, at least you know you're being aggressive. At least you're not ignorant to the whole fact, right? And again, if you're going to be a buyer right now, take a quick profit target, tighten up that stop, and then try to get as much out of it. Just don't be greedy, right? Don't be greedy. You'll be a little bit foolish to be greedy here as you go back higher here if you're getting long off these lows. Again, the lower it goes, the more attractive it is to see buying opportunities, higher it goes, the more attractive it is to see selling opportunities. Guys, I know there's a lot on this chart, so don't forget, come out and see me tomorrow. One of my favorite markets here, this crazy crude, we'll be trading it live in real time tomorrow morning. How about the S&P? Well, boy, we talked about this last week. If you remember, the big scenario here right now is we're trading inside of a wedge, right? It's a consolidating market. You've got higher lows in price. You've got lower highs in price. So right now, what's pretty obvious is they're gunning for these highs, right? They're trying to, they're trying to do some price exploration, hunting for these highs, right? You know, a lot of people will say, well, they're running stops. Well, they don't exist, and they don't care about your stops. What they're trying to do is, is and again, the collective they, right? The buyers here right now are trying to explore higher prices. They're trying to see if there's any interest here in buying new highs. We know the scenario right now in the S&P hasn't really changed for the past, well, since the pretty much the, the middle, the you know, last two-thirds of the month of July. We're trading sideways. What does that mean? We've been doing it the past three weeks. Buy lows, sell highs. What are the best patterns? Failure patterns, right? Failure patterns. We expect now, just like we said last week, right? Remember this last week? Pushes all the way down. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Sellers try once. Sellers try twice. Buy right into those stops when you're at the low. As we go higher here, here's your first attempt from the buyers, right? Let them try again. Sell into that stop. Sell those highs. So plan is exactly the same. Now let's recall in the short term what happened as we went into this week. We talked about this on Friday. We had a spike up into a, into a trading range. 
Remember, there's a bullish bias to this trading range. Remember, we talked about how challenging this little range was going to be to really get a good breakout. Why? Because, first of all, there's a bullish bias to this trading range. That's why we said last Thursday, last Wednesday, Thursday, sorry, last Thursday night in the newsletter, you can go back and watch it. It's at the end of this video, right? It runs in a loop. We said you're going to get some opportunities to, these buy, right, to buy these lows because you have that bullish bias. But at the same time, though, don't be too greedy because you're right at the high of this wedge, right? So just be aware you've got resistance up at the highs, right? So buy lows, sell highs, buy lows, sell highs. We finished the week last week talking about the fact that we had this bullish move higher into a trading range. Therefore, you were going to see some buying opportunities at that low. Also, taking profit up at the highs, we've got to be really careful trying to buy this breakout, right? So I wouldn't be looking for a breakout pullback right now just because we have the high of that range. I will be looking for that breakout pullback to fail so I can take this right back down. So kind of catching up on things from last week. Range-bound market, sell highs, buy lows. That needs to be your you're above and that, that is your major uh, priority right now. That is that is priority number one. Second thing is you can see we're breaking out of this trading range to the upside. So if it does fail, I can't predict the future. All I know is where the highest probability trades are going to be. It's called being a professional trader. We can't predict the future. We do reference our experience watching these for years and years and years. I'm going to reference almost my 50, on my almost 15 years of experience watch this, 15 years of December, right? But I can't predict the future. What I do know, though, is, is that as this thing breaks out, if we were in a bullish trend right now, I'd say absolutely buy that pullback. But we're not. We're in a range right now. So I'll be looking for price to fail and come right back down into that range. That's where the highest probability trade is going to be. Hey, if it goes without me, then so be it. At least I know I'm following the plan, and that plan has made me very, very, very well off right over the past, again, almost 15 years. Buying highs, not the best idea. We want to sell the highs of this range, right? Sell the highs of this range. So here's a plan for tomorrow on the E-mini S&P. We're testing the highs of the range this evening which means sellers will be looking for reversal patterns at resistance. Reversal patterns at resistance. And buyer failures at support. Buyer failures. Oh, you mean like a buyer failure at the high of that range? Yes. You mean like a buyer failure at support level? Yes. You mean like a buyer failure back down on those lows? Yes. Right? So all the support levels you see, support, 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 Basically, make it easy on yourself. As price goes higher, any red line overhead, anything above me, I'm looking for what were the three ways again? Reversal pattern, buyer failure pattern, or continuation pattern after we make the turn. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see you've been paying attention. As price goes lower, again, remember, the big rule is we're at the highs. I don't care how bullish it feels right now. I still have to think long-term probabilities. If it was, if it was, do you think it would be that easy? Well, it appears we're going higher here. Boy, don't I? No, I, I'm glad it's not that easy because then there wouldn't be any money in it for us to make. It's got to be a little more difficult than that, right? Look at the big picture. Whoa, wrong big picture, wrong chart. There we go. Look at the big picture here. You can easily see here now. We're going to start running towards these highs. We may go a little bit higher here. We may get all the way up to that range expansion and then collapse off the highs. Bottom line is, you know the plan. As we go lower, I'm looking for buyer failure at support to sell. As we go higher, I'm looking for buyer failure. I'm looking for reversal patterns. I'm looking for continuations as we make the move back lower. What does it take for me to be a bull right now? What's it going to take for me to be a bull right now? I'm going to have to see us hold a pullback. For me to be a bull right now, and even then, we're still inside of this big range. The hard part's going to be picking those spots to get long on the way up to these. Look at all the resistance we have overhead, right? That's going to be the challenge. The higher probability, 
you got to wait for it. I get, I'll give you that. you got to wait for it. It's not just going to fall on your lap. you got to wait for it here. The highest probability trades right now are going to be selling off these highs. And again, reversal patterns, failure patterns, and continuation patterns. Wrapping up here with the euro, and then we'll, we'll dip into gold here before we finish up here. Both of these markets, euro and gold, are very similar here tonight. Here's what we have on both the euro and the gold. We have a long-term bearish trend, okay? You, you can thank the U.S. dollar for that one, right? U.S. dollar moving lower, and because of that dollar, of course, or sorry, excuse me, dollar pushing higher, right? That will push down negative correlation gold and the euro. So here we have this short-term channel now that is making its way higher here, right? So here's what's happening right now. Long-term bear channel, short-term bull channel. This is when I say give the benefit of the doubt to the longer-term trend, right? Give it the benefit of the doubt. Trust me on this. It may not happen this time, but over a long period of time, if you just bail on that long-term trend, you're going you're gonna to wind up scratching your head going, where did I make a mistake? Where did I get in too late? What did I do wrong? Give the, long, give the trend the benefit of the doubt. So right now, as I zoom out on this chart here, you can begin seeing kind of what I'm, what I'm talking about here, right? Long-term bear channel, right? Short-term bull channel. You're going to see a lot of this. This is going to happen on the gold too right now. So basically, where are we in both of these channels? Let's start with the long-term bear channel. The long-term bear channel, which I'll color in green here, we undershot the low, we tested the overshoot at the high, and now we're going to try to make a run back towards those lows. The target for those sellers is to revisit that low. 0815. That's the sell target ultimately for the sellers. What does that tell me? Get short. Look for selling opportunities. Now, here's where it starts to make sense. Now look at the pink channel, the magenta channel, the fuchsia channel, the bull channel, right? What do you see? Where are we of the bull channel? Up at the highs. What do channels do? They rotate, right? They rotate. So where should they rotate to? Low to high, high to low, low to high, high to low. What does that tell me right now? Look for selling opportunities. Okay, yeah. So when you start to talk about, you know, you start to work your way through this, you realize, okay, so apparently there should be a seller right now, whether I'm bullish or bearish in the long term. I should be looking for, what was it again? The highest probability trades. Again, I can't predict tomorrow. Neither can you. Nobody can, right? Warren Buffet can't predict tomorrow. What he can do, though, is, is know where the highest probability opportunities are going to be and focus on doing that, right? If you're a baseball player, you swing at strikes, you're going to get the bat on the ball. That's all they ask of you as a professional baseball player, right? Swing at strikes. That's all you're going to do. That's all we're going to do here, okay? Now, so we know, based on that analysis now, really the only option is to be a seller right now. So how do we get short? Well, if price goes higher, I've got resistance areas waiting for me overhead. Hmm, nice and easy. As the price goes higher, what were the three ways to do it again? Remind me, guys. Reversals. Mm -hmm. Buyer failure. Yep. What if it takes a turn? Wave patterns, right, going lower. God, you're getting good here. You're getting good here. So resistance areas overhead, right, reversals, buyer failures, and again, or wait for the turn and then sell, sell, sell on the way back down. What if price goes lower? If price goes lower here, this is where sellers will look for buyer failures, buyer failures, buyer failures. Got a plethora of support levels waiting for you below. And the same thing is going to happen on gold here as well. I love it when we attempt to break, to, to, to bounce off these support levels, because literally all you're going to do is, you know where buyers try to buy, right? The buyers are going to try to buy pullbacks after we hit support. 
wait for it to fail. So as we're going lower, I'm looking for buyers to react, fail, buyers to react, fail, buyers to react, fail, buyers to, right on the way down. I can scalp, 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 and then leave a runner because I've got some major targets waiting for me to the downside. Now you've got the plan here on Euro. Let's keep moving though. Let's keep moving. Last but not least here on the gold, wrapping up here on the gold, it's pretty much the same scenario on the gold, right? Zoom out here on gold, you'll see the same thing. Long-term bear channel, short-term bull channel. We get the undershoot of the channel low. We test the overshoot on the opposite side. Check that box off. Bull channel. This little bad boy even gave you a nice little overshoot of that bull channel. What's going to happen? Rotation. Rotation. It's going to try to go back to that low before going higher again. Sell, 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 sell. How do I sell? As price goes higher, what? Buyer failure? Sell it back in. Reversal pattern. Sell it back in. Plenty of resistance areas waiting for us overhead to be used. What if price goes lower? Here's what I'm really looking forward to tomorrow on gold. I see you 12.2. This is the area where, if you recall from last Friday, that was the area I was waiting to break earlier. You can see, though. Look. Look what's happened here. Buyers try once. No. Buyers try twice. Okay. This is going to be go time here. That could be the one that breaks the, the straw that breaks the uh, camel's back there, if you say. I've never seen the camel's back broken. But you get the point, though. And then, of course, targets waiting for you down bottom. Buyer failure, buyer failure, buyer failure, buyer failure. Scalp, 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 scalp on the way back down. Target at the, long, at the short-term bull channel low. Target, target. And then, of course, the sellers, they're gunning for that 1072 area there long-term for the sell side. I don't think we're going to see that in the, in the Tuesday session on gold, but that will be right good to come here in the future. Guys and gals. I think we have a plan here for us tomorrow. Now, please don't forget. Please don't forget. We do this together with all of our students every day. What are you waiting for? Right? If you're trying to save money by not getting education, well, I tried that when I first started. Right? Didn't save me any money. Cost me almost five years of my life. Six figures of money, right? Guys and gals, get educated. I help students every day here launch a career in the financial markets, doing it the right way. We can't predict tomorrow, but we're going to definitely do it like professionals, and we're going to trade, again, swing at strikes, right? Find the highest probability trading opportunities. We get a busy week in front of us, guys. Head over to schooloftrade.com. Join the free trial. I'll shoot you an invite. Come out and test drive our live trade room. Also, three levels of membership, and I've always got someone standing by 24-7 to give you guys a hand. My name is Joseph. Great to have you back here this week. We got Monday through Thursday evening for our newsletter, and we are just getting the car warmed up here today. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Trade room opens up at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Back here once again tomorrow. Be well out there, folks. Be nice to each other. I'll see you in the manana. Adios, amigos. Bye for now.